this video, I'm going to cover the eight challenges that any analyst will face and what can you do about it. So the first one I want to talk about is handling the business stakeholders. So I would say I classify them into two different categories. One is that they don't know anything about data and they don't even know how the data is pulled or how the metrics are calculated. But they just say, all right, can you help me to increase revenue? Can you help me to increase retention? And we have more users in the uh, platform. And these uh, business stakeholders, they have like very big questions that they want to answer, but they don't really have a specific data they want you to like they want you to look into. So when I receive questions like this, I actually prefer to receive questions like this more because it's more generic question, but then you also have to, you know, be like a consultant kind of to consult with your business stakeholders, be like, well, if the person, let's say if a business stakeholder is from a marketing team, then you might ask them like, uh, so like, what are the tools or how do we get users to understand the business side of it? And then see what kind of action items can we take? Then that will determine you know, what kind of data I would be able to pull to help with this business metric, like increasing the revenue or something. So that's what I would do with people that don't know anything about data. And then there's another kind of people that ask very, very specific questions. They'd be like, oh, can you calculate seven day, uh, first seven day retention for new users? But when uh, any analysts receive any questions like this, the first thing they should ask is why? Or like, what's the point of even calculating this metric? Or like, what kind of business questions are they trying to solve? Because I have been in many situations where I have been asked so many questions, uh, then they're all very specific, like, oh, can you pull this data for me? Can you uh, write some SQL for me? But at the end, they'll end up asking me to do so many of data pulls for them. Um, and it's because they, you know, you, you get them one metric or one pull and they're like, oh, that's not what I thought it should be. And then they ask you for more because they're trying to answer some big question in, in the back of their head. And they think that the metric they're asking you to pull will help them solve that. But in fact, it doesn't. So then that's why we have to go, come into play as, you know, an analysts to help them understand what exactly the business question they're trying to answer. And we know the data better than we than they then do, so that we should inform them what kind of metrics, what kind of data will help them with that question. And the second problem is like almost all the data related positions will face into this problem is like which table, which column are we using for revenue? And that you might have an aggregated table of revenue by customer ID, and then you might have another table of revenue by product ID, and then you might have another table of uh, revenue by store ID. And usually in a company, there's just thousands and you know, like ten, like tens of thousands of tables that you don't know where, which column is the reliable one or which which table is the right one to use and everyone will tell you like or unless you know someone has worked there for a long time they will tell you oh yeah use that table that column that's the most accurate one because that refreshes every day and then the other one doesn't get refreshed until you know every month and that those are just other things that you never know until you ask somebody or unless you have a very good data documenting tool where you can look up, you know, what's the, uh, I mean, you can also use SQL to look up, like, you know, what's the maximum uh, partition date to check, you know, how, how refresh is this table or right? how many blanks are there in this table. But in general, it's just like a really pain in the ass if there's so many tables telling you the same information. And the third one is data cleaning. So when you look at a table like this and you see customer ID made a purchase of the same product twice in a day, is that really true? Or is that a bug in your data that it's just locked twice? Uh, this is the kind of question that you need to ask yourself all the time or even ask in data engineer, you know, how how many how how accurate is this table and that kind of thing the fourth one i want to talk about is when you're collecting your data you might end up having i don't know i wrote like lines of like 2000 lines of sql and you don't even know what you're joining anymore no i'm just kidding well i typically go through a process of you know only adding one table at once and then also checking the results before i continue building it to a thousand line query um 
So, but it's definitely also still a challenge of like trying to aggregate or try to pull data from all sorts of places. And sometimes even worse is that they're not even in the same database. And that you might have to manually merge it, merge them together in like Python or something. And it's just really a pain in the butt. And the fifth one that I want to talk about is, you know, when you calculate some sort of metric or number or revenue or daily active user or a monthly active user, you calculate a number and then you don't even know if it's correct because you haven't worked at a company long enough to know if it's like that's the right number or not. And someone else will be like, that number just looks off. Uh, and then you don't even know why or you don't even know if it's correct. So what you have to do is like go cross check with like other teams or like other existing data sets or dashboards someone already made to check your data and to see like, oh, does that make sense? Does that seem right? Does that seem accurate? And oftentimes you need to present your, uh, present your analysis or exploratory analysis and tell a complete story. So then you will have to walk people through a journey of why exactly did we look into this and what did we find and how does this make a business impact? And you are kind of sort of like a storyteller, but trying to put numbers in, you know? And the seventh one is that I have ran into this a lot is that someone very high up or someone just has this these magical numbers in their head that they think, oh, revenue should be this or like revenue increase should be this or, you know, performance metric should be this. And or like 90 per we our retention should be 90 percent not 80 percent and then when you try when you show the result of like 80 percent retention that doesn't match with a number in their head but they also don't have a reference of where that number came from like where did you even get that 90 percent from it might be from two years ago some analyst told me this number and i just remembered it and it's just very hard to do when you don't even know how to check, you know, why are we not matching in their head. And the eighth one is a follow-up analysis. So whenever you present something like this, a line chart uh, with some sort of time series line chart, and you show a spike as somewhere in your chart, like this one, the uh, green arrow pointing. And then they were like, why is that going up? And they want you to do a full another analysis of why did something happen to that day that will increase the number or why is that? So you ended up having like a lot of discussions and thoughts of like, oh, why, how can that be happening? Like, what do we do to make it so great? And we need to figure out why that is so that we can, you know, do the same thing and make it even better. And that's another, you know, another story of like, so much more data you need to dig into to figure out why and sometimes it's not really explainable or it's just seasonality you know